I wish I could make a 100% accurate price prediction and that it happened. But the reality is the markets don't work like that. That's why cryptocurrencies are referred to as speculative. We predict and then we have to look at what the results are. You could be the best technical analysis in the world and still be off. I've seen predictions recently of Bitcoin's going to 65,000, but it might go down to 40,000. That's a pretty big gap. I'm considered one of the best intuitives in the world. I have a number of books published on intuition and psychic ability, and I cannot specifically predict what the prices are going to do. But we can learn from how we read the markets. I believe it's a combination of great technical analysis, and research looking at the fundamentals combined with a healthy dose of gut instinct. I think that we don't want to go too much into one of these strategies and not of the other. It's about finding that balance and also the other factor is it depends how long that you have been in cryptocurrencies how long you've been reading the markets, how long you've been doing this technical analysis. So I'm going to share with you right now an update of the predictions that I had done for March. I did this right at the beginning of March and now we're at the beginning of April. And let's see, did I totally bomb it? Was I very accurate? I'm going to reveal now exactly what occurred. I'm going to share with you totally honestly I think some things I did really well and some things I was off on. I'm at work in progress. I also, I'm newer to the cryptocurrency space. I am newer to trading and uh, we'll, we'll get into that, okay? So thank you so much for being here with me, for subscribing to the channel. I'm Joanna Garzilli. This is Crypto Angel Network and we share a common goal of the love, a love of cryptocurrency, a love of digital finance and building blockchain and making this world more connected, more efficient. I think that's the case, right? Otherwise we wouldn't be here in this way. And we are of the 1%. We are considered early adopters. And even for me, I mean, I first dipped my toe in back in 2017. Now here I am again in 2021, I dived in and I'll tell you at points, I do feel it is overwhelming. I have to process everything that's happening. And so I appreciate getting to share my journey here with you. And what I'm about to share with you as well is not financial advice. You must do your own due diligence. My hope and intention is that as you see the things I've done well, and the mistakes I've made where I've been over enthusiastic and maybe where I've been a little bit too cautious that this is gonna help you to be able to trust your own decisions even more around how you build a healthy, robust crypto portfolio of assets. So let me go ahead and share the screen. Thank you for liking this video and especially for your comments. I will always reply to your comments and just know that if you see some WhatsApp thing with, oh, reply to this number and my blah, 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 trade at, that's not me. That's a scammer. I'm not going to ask you for any money at all. I'm not going to be offering you anything. You want to get my book, Big Miracles, my other book, Unleash the Psychic in You, or my racy book, Scarlet's Confession Tales of a British Psychic. I would love that if you feel inspired, but I'm not going to be selling you anything here. So with that being said, let me share my screen and reveal what has been happening. Where are we at now? And um, okay, so I'm going to start off, let me, before I get into Ethereum, I'm going to go straight to my coin tracker dashboard. This is a software I use and um, I find it, it's good for, really good for doing taxes. I used it for, with my turbo tax and everything went smoothly, uh, no issues, low, low order 
everything was great with that. So I like Coin Tracker a lot. If you're interested in that, there is an affiliate link in my bio. And uh, one of the things that I will say, I did have a problem and they did resolve it. So I had bought a VThor token and it was showing that VThor, that the price was zero and and it wasn't. So it was showing me with a negative, like that I was upside down over $11,000 when I wasn't. And that was quite, I will admit, I was quite frustrated because I'm paying $14 a month for that service and I would like it to work. I didn't hear back from them when I replied on their site here. But when I sent out a tweet and I said, what's going on? Then they did up level the importance of it and I saw that other people had the same issue too and it got resolved within 48 hours so I think that and this happened also the other day with something went wrong with PlayStation and if I go and tweet something out and say hey I'm having this problem it normally gets resolved pretty quickly via Twitter all right so one of the things that i want to share with you here as well is and i'm just got, i've got my notes here with me i took some notes to just look back from my video and you can look at my video here at crypto angel network that was dated it said something like cryptocurrency price predictions for march 2021 and i think i posted it on march the 1st or march the 2nd 2021 so if you want to look back at what i said to where we are now because I feel transparency is very important. And uh, okay, so let me, I have some notes here. So I'm gonna look off occasionally to the side. But one of the things, let me just start off with the bigger picture here. And I had said at the beginning of March, what did I say? I said, okay, where is my portfolio gonna be? Will it, will I, the decisions I made, will it have bombed? Will it have increased? And I, I, I gave an estimate that I thought I would be up to around 60, 65,000, then my portfolio would be at that at that price, that it would possibly touch 70,000. But I was saying basically if we just 60 grand. And where we are today is right now, my portfolio is 33,145 as of this right, it's updating in real time. And I did go and sell some things. I did decide to take profits. And so you can see here, here were my gains. I, I, I was like, okay, I'm, I'm not gonna just, just keep everything in there because I just, what if everything collapses? You know, just what if everything collapses? And in March was, I, I thought, oh, this is gonna be a, a really just a very exciting month. And it was in some ways for some tokens, and I'll get into that more. But it also was extremely volatile in a way that I didn't quite anticipate. And I think that is because of when people are doing things beyond one's control. And I'm talking really about whales here, hum humpback whales, institutional money, like very experienced traders that are pumping and dumping the market. So in total here, what is that? We're talking about 33, uh, 55. So just over 55 grand. So I, I things didn't bomb. I didn't lose money. I thank God my portfolio is an upside down from within that 30 day period. I have come out on top. So I'm, I'm pretty happy. I, I, I gained my profits there and took those with 23K. And right now my portfolio is 33K. And uh, let's see, that's plus 116%. I wanna make sure that I'm showing here is that un, um, I'm gonna go to actually something in more detail here. And this is the unrealized performance. So as of where I'm at right now, I have, and again, this just fluctuates depending on what's happening with the, the different things in the market. I have an unrealized return I'm up of 2,700. And I've got to tell you, I feel like this is a little bit of a fluke uh, because I'm looking at, I'm about to take prepare to, to, to do a next, my next step is, let me just stop the share a second. My next step is I'm going to be diving into really focusing on how can I pick certain tokens that are going to have much greater gains. And I think that that what I'm seeing, and you tell me in the comments if you think the same or otherwise, what are your insights with this for our community? 
is that if I get something before it hits a main exchange, when the market cap isn't crazy big, and then it does get listed on a main exchange, that's where the gains can be exponential. So I, I have just now, I've got my, my funds, I got into Gate.io, and, and this is how I bought Ethereum by accident, in a way, before it pumped. <laughs> I wasn't planning this. So my thinking was, okay, I'm going to get some of these gaming tokens. I'm going to get some other tokens that I see have fantastic fundamentals that have protocols that are going to work really amazingly with interoperability. And there's so many of them. I haven't gone and done my portfolio in Gate.io yet. I'll tell you, being totally honest, because I felt overwhelmed. It takes a lot for me to get overwhelmed, but I got overwhelmed because then I could just see all these trading pairs and I want lots of them and then some of you here i am going to be having videos i'm going to be doing videos coming up i'm going to do math i'm going to do uh veracity i'm going to do hedera hashgraph i'll do hollow chain but there's some other ones that i am quite excited about uh, chain games i'm excited about farm i'm very excited about that and i'm going to show you why from my research that I did on the white paper. And um, I like Eternity. It's just, I mean, it's just so high right now, but I like Super Farm. I like Trust Swap. So I'm just, I'm just sort of going, I only have a certain amount of funds to be able to put in. And so what am I going to do? So I'm just taking, I'm just making sure I just sit with it before I make that decision. So what happened was to be able to go into Gate.io, you you can't go and put US dollar, you can't put fiat in there. It has to be Ethereum or it has to be US dollar tether or it has to be, uh, what was the other one? Or Bitcoin. Those are the ones where you can just sort of just transfer into there. Anyway, so I looked at the trading, but, but since even I went to go and do the Ethereum, now they've added all these US dollar tether trading pairs. I mean, Gate.io, it's it's going ex explosive. So I, I'm going to be doing some videos on that soon. I just wanted to get more familiar with it before I go and do that and share on that. So let me go back to sharing my screen. And I thought to myself, um, here we go. So I, yeah, so I thought, okay, I need to, if I'm going to go and get all these tokens, I need to go and get Ethereum. And I thought, well, okay, I, I took out profits before I took out my gains. And now what am I going to do to build back up? And so I went and bought, you can see here, I've got 4.827 of Ethereum. And I bought it, I bought at a couple of different, what did I do? I bought at 1,672 so I just got 0.65 of an Ethereum there. And I thought, okay, I'm going to really get into these other tokens. I'm going to put around eight grand in and, and distribute between those tokens to build a strong portfolio. And it ended up here. Uh, I did my other bigger buy of 1,668 and then it dropped again a bit. It was, it was all over the place. But look now, I mean, it's it's break, it's it's about to break break out and you can see here let me just go to if I can go to this with ethereum you can see here we are at um where am I at here plus so this was I bought it 10 days ago I'm up 22 almost 23 percent I got if I decided to go and sell my ethereum right now I'd be able to I'd have gains of 1847 and we've got the price right now is 2046. And what had I said? My price prediction for Ethereum for my video I did at the beginning of March, I had said uh, I thought it would touch 25, it would go to around 2500, maybe 2750, possibly 3000, then come back round to maybe 2250, but around 2500. Well, I mean, we're at 2,000 now. I think that I'd said that would be by now. We're at April the 2nd right now. Maybe that'll be in a couple of weeks. So sometimes it's hard to predict with, with, with the price, with things. And, you know, at the time when I made that prediction, some people were saying, oh, end of March, it's going to be 5,000. It's going to be, we could have 10,000. I didn't make a prediction like that. I didn't go totally out there with it. And, and this is why I think it, it's really important when you are watching some of the price predictions, please really think carefully about, 
yes, maybe it's going to hit that price, but how many months is it going to take to reach that? And then is it going to touch it and then go through a massive uh, retracement consolidation? Or is it going to keep going up and up and up? So I know that there have been some predictions for 48,000 this year. I do see that there is, I'm starting to understand as I wanted to go and buy these other tokens, that there is a huge use for Ethereum. And that sort of like how I want to go and trade. I want to buy chain games. I want to buy Eternity. I, I, I want to get farm. I, I want to get a number of other things. And then I'm going to have to use my Ethereum. And I, I, to be honest with you, I do not want to go and use that Ethereum. So I just moved. I thought, I'll just do a test. I'll just move over $10 of Ethereum to Gate.io. And so with that $10 I moved, the fee, the gas fee, whatever from the exchange, from Coinbase Pro over to Gate.io was just under $10. So I went, wow, for the price of $10, I had to pay a $10 fee. So I don't know, maybe you can answer this in the comments. I'm a little bit scared to do this. What if I do say $1,000 next and I move that over to Gate.io? Am I going to have a $1,000 gas fee, a $100 gas fee? Because I know part why I wanted to go on Gate.io is because of the issues that I read with Uniswap and that you can be bet like even if you get like a thousand x gains which is not easy to time that and i think you have to huddle for a while that just to put your money in is five grand in fees and to take your money out is about five thousand in fees i mean since you're looking at ten eleven thousand dollars to be able to do that so you better be doing some whopping big trades so unless one's a really experienced trader or going in super super early to get those exponential gains so that is something i'm still trying to get my head around i'm still trying to process it um so i don't want to give up this ethereum right now that i have just under five ethereum because i i feel like we look it's about to break out it is about it has it is about to break out i mean you can just you can see it. You can just see it's about to, we're just hitting that tipping point. So how can it in April not go to 2,500, even up to a touch up to 3,000? And then because of the news right about July and all the stuff with the, the developers and what they're doing with that. So I imagine that it's going to go up uh, quite a bit so yeah so that right now like I said in my portfolio when we look at overall on on my dashboard there it's um yeah I mean my biggest hold like my pretty much well not my biggest holdings that one is my are my biggest holdings and um but it's still ethereum has done well now it says one is down right now let's talk about harmony one because a lot of us here are big fans of harmony and um, so I have just over 60,001 and um, let's see where I'm going to go back over to my portfolio so I can just get a little update on that. And it, it's a constantly moving thing. I mean, if you'd seen this two, three days ago when Harmony was at 22 cents. But anyway, so I've got all time, my unrealized return is 2630 i had taken some profits on it and then i had kept some in there and then i had gone oh my god why did i sell that and bought back in more again but if you just look at this overall chart here you can see it broke out of the resistance it went up to 2250 and right now we're going through a little bit more consolidation but i would imagine i mean I, it's got to in April. How can it not harmony not hit thirty cents? It's got to hit thirty cents. And the reason why why I say this is because I just want to look at my notes here. From oh, so when I did the beginning of March video, harmony was three cents, and and it kept being stuck around the sort of one and a half, three. It was just trying to get past four, then it was back down at three. It was at three a lot in in uh, February. And then um, I said, well, my prediction was, I said, I think it'll hit at least five, maybe six, maybe seven cents. <laughs> and, oh my gosh, it did way more than that. It went up to, right? It went up to 22 and a half cents. So it went far beyond what I had thought. So I guess I was too conservative there. 
But this just goes to show we just we don't know when something's going to break out. We just don't know exactly. So what is your price prediction for Harmony for by the end of April? Where do you think we're going to be at? I mean, am I being too conservative saying 30 cents? Maybe we're going to hit 40, 50 cents and then go through some retracement consolidation. And one of our Tommy Soto, who's on here in the Crypto Angel community, thought that based on his technical analysis, it was going to go back down to 11 cents, that it was due for a consolidation from his technical analysis. Are you leaning towards what Tommy says? Or do you, are you leaning towards what I'm saying, where I think that we're going to go towards 30 cents? Obviously, we all want it to go to that, but I want to hear from you in the comments. Let me know what do you think. I want to also touch upon, um, let's see, where I had, um, let me go back to the coin tracker here. And this was in my, let's see, does this show, um, hang on a sec, bear with me, bear with me, bear with me. Let me just go all time, unrealized, let's just go total performance and um net proceeds so what happened here let's just talk about so a bitcoin my prediction i i i decided i sold my bitcoin i saw that mm crypto did this joke for april fools where he said oh i sold my bitcoin no of course i'm not selling my bitcoin but for me that doesn't have millions of dollars in bitcoin and i just had a smaller amount i've gone through having it, selling it. So I took my profits. I took close to 3,000 in profits. And my price prediction had been that I thought that it would go to, what did I say? I thought it would go up to 60, like around 60, 65,000. That it could possibly touch 70, 75,000. That it would, um, it could go down to a retracement of 46,000 that was sort of like the the swing high swing low and uh where are we at you know we ended up hitting around 60 but we just didn't get past that so maybe it's a month of maybe i think that april this could be the month where we where my prediction for March is going to happen in April instead. You see, that's the thing. One of the things I found when I'm doing intuitive psychic readings as well over the years is it's very hard to predict with time. Sometimes you can get the information pretty well, but to have time accuracy, it's super challenging. So we did hit, we hit lows of, uh, around what was it around 43,000 so I feel like I wasn't I was I think I was pretty good on my prediction for Bitcoin because people were like oh 100,000 this month oh and then I see the predictions for a million at the end of this year I personally think that's bloody ridiculous I mean come on Bitcoin's not gonna hit a million dollars this year I don't even like I just uh, even 275 even if it goes parabolic really are we going to hit 275,000 300,000 by December it just doesn't seem like it because bitcoin just it just goes so crazy the 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 ups the the sort of the spectrum of how it goes through those ups and downs um let me just talk to you about other price predictions i'd made i said polygon at the time when i made pre prediction on polygon and the end i did i took profits on polygon uh you know if i'd sold at the top of that it would have been considerably more so i took 860 867 868 dollars in profit polygon when, I, when it was 23 cents i said i thought it would go over 60 cents and that it would go through some retracement well it did i mean it went even higher and right now we can see it's at 39 cents and uh, so it, it actually went beyond a little bit beyond what I thought it, it was, but it didn't stick around that. It went beyond what I thought, and then it went down lower to, than what I thought it would retrace to. So I was sort of like somewhat right with it. With Ravencoin, it's 19 cents right now. At the time when I did the prediction, it was, let's see, uh, at the time of the prediction, it was 16 cents. And I thought that it would have um, a support of 25 cents and touch 35. But actually what's happened is, is that it's more like the resistance has been 25 cents. It did go up to that and that it just couldn't get past it. With Cardano ADA at the time I bought at 87 cents, 
Um, I had sold at some profit, then I, I bought more when the news came out about the Coinbase Pro listing. You know, I wish I just hadn't bought into that that FOMO. I really don't like, oh my God, I gotta get on that. It's going on Coinbase Pro. Wow, I'm gonna make money quickly. And it was a bloody disaster. There's the video I did on the, um, I, you can see my video on Cardano where I talked about that it was the craziest launch ever and had massive manipulation. I just don't understand what happened with the discrepancy in the exchanges there, how the price was so different on all other exchanges. And yet on Coinbase Pro, it was so much higher. It was insane. Uh, so I ended up, I decided I took a loss on Cardano of $170. Typically, you know, if I'd held on, I just, I think it's just like Cardano, I don't, I, for me, I know some, some people are huge fans of it, but I, my conclusion that I have come to here with Cardano is I don't like that it has such a massive market cap and there's too many whales in it. And, and so I am leaning towards those slightly lower market caps, market caps in the low hundreds of millions that go into the low billions for, for, getting in at that point because i just feel this is just too too crazy and my prediction for cardano i said when it was 80 88 cents i'd said i thought it would touch two dollars and retrace to 170 180 and what happened was it touched around right 190 but then it went through a really really big retracement what down to 104 and now right now we're at 120 I just didn't, you know, I just actually didn't have the patience to hold Cardano. I know it's going to go up. I, I, I think by the end of April, it's it's going to climb its way back up there. Maybe by the end of April, there'll be one, 140, 150. It'll start to edge its way back up. It's just too uncomfortable for me. And so I took my funds out of Cardano and I got to tell you, I did go through some anxiety with it. So I was like, why did I go into Cardano? Why did I do it? And so excited about the launch and I thought I was going to take like a quick sort of 10k in, in profits and well that didn't happen and if I'd hung on and wait I could have had some profits but again I just I was impatient and so I went into v, I took the majority of that went into the VThor token but I bought near the top of VThor token and near the top of VChain so you can see right now I'm negative at VThor token, um, you know, the the uh, the VGAS, I'm upside down 1,890. I'm not worried because I think by the end of April, it will, I'll be up. We'll, I'm, I, we'll see, right? I'll show you the portfolio again. We'll see whether I'm, I'm positive with that in profits, but I believe it will be. Yeah, I wish I hadn't sat on it. I nearly bought in at 0 0.06 cents and I didn't. I just didn't. Yeah, so I'm like, these are the things I'm learning, some of the mistakes that I've made. With VeChain, it's plus $75 right now. Uh, I think VeChain, I hadn't done a prediction on it for last month, but I hadn't felt that strongly about it, and that's why I hadn't gone into it. And now, where do I think? Could it be at 20 cents by the end of April? I mean, yeah, I, I, I think it could be. And then it'll go through some retracement. This is just seems what's, what seems to happen. What do you think? Because when I look at each token, I see that they move in different ways. So I went much more heavily into VThor token. But I do, you know, the more that I research VeChain and and the, v, the VThor gas, I felt very strongly about it. And I just want to show you one thing here, actually. Let me just pull up in the screen. Uh... Uh, V-chain, yeah, V-chain vaccine traceability. And this is why I think one of the reasons it's going to um, really start to blow up besides all the things it has going on, blow up in a good, in a good way, right? Um, is that the, it says here V-chain drug and vaccine traceability solution. This is why I'm not worried. I'm holding on to V-chain right now. Uh, it says China is currently facing a tragic vaccine scandal where it was recently discovered that Chinese vaccine manufacturer, manufacturers provided hundreds of thousands of faulty and falsely documented vaccines to Chinese school children. The scandal has incited widespread fury both in China and abroad, prompting the country's president 
excuse my pronunciation, pronunciation, Xi Jinping to describe the instance as vile and shocking. And so if we just go all the way down here, they've got uh, a whole load of people were arrested. And if we go all the way down here, an equity owner and VeChain, um, they are, let me just go to the section that I want to say, Drug and vaccine traceability solutions developed by VeChain and DNVGL in partnership is leveraging public blockchain technology to rapidly advance drug traceability, monitoring, security, and auditing. And this has been approved by the Shanghai government. They are the only one. Look, the VeChain Thor blockchain and record the VeChain Thor blockchain, all data involved in vaccine manufacturing and transport, including getting vaccines, etc. So manufacturers, storage facilities, cold chain distribution, hospitals, even usage. And they are in VeChain is eliminating the potential risk in the whole process and ensures that vaccine records are immutable and permanent, right? So these are the benefits of blockchain. And they are the only, they're the only one it's they are an, ex an exclusive id for each vaccine and uh, anyway it says they are the only one v chain is the only one that has been approved look at this product solutions rolled out for china's government enterprises only initial components of a much larger plan so this is why at this news i am extremely this bullish on and 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 this is why i'm holding on to the vthor token as well and because that goes hand in hand with that and then there's a number of other things that vchain's doing as well so i just think that there's going to be quite a steady increase this is where i just sort of just it's finding that balance between what is the sentiment of the marketplace and then what are the fundamentals on progress on a certain project? Like Harmony is delivering a lot of, of what they're doing. VeChain is as well. I think that some of the narrative that I have, um, some of the narrative that I have seen out there about, um, oh, not the stimulus checks, everyone's just going to put their, their stimulus checks into crypto and that it's not like we are one percent right now we are one percent people are going to be i've seen it when i've gone into scottsdale, scottsdale fashion mall people that and i'm not i'm not making a judgment here i'm not making a judgment here but i'm seeing people lining up outside gucci and louis vuitton and coming out with handbags or whatever else they want to buy. And this was during the whole pandemic. I'm thinking, wow, if the unemployment, like the, people are just going and shopping. So those stimulus checks, some of those people are going to be going and shopping either for designer stuff or it's Nike sneakers or they are paying off credit cards or they are being genuinely responsible and putting their money towards their family to paying bills rent utilities all that stuff especially if people have a family for someone who's single maybe and they don't have dependents yeah they're like okay you know what i'm gonna take a little gamble here this is money i wasn't expecting to get i'll just go and stick it into bitcoin or whatever else and i'll i'll see what happens but think about it i mean how much of that money is going to go in there so i just i think it's important to you know we look at the micro detail and then we come back to the bigger picture and let me just share my screen again i know i get a little bit passionate about things i want to hear your comments on this what do you think about what happened with the stimulus how of the percentage of people that got their stimulus checks in the united states how many do you think went into crypto that they stuck their money in there um and then i just wanted to touch upon uh new i had talked about new cipher you know i had a little bit of it and that and then i sold it and then i kept it and but new cipher my prediction at the time when it was 69 cents uh i thought it was gonna go up to 95 maybe touch a dollar even 110 and um but it didn't it really started retrace and i took 32 dollars profit here uh, we're at 61 cents now 
but is it going to go to a dollar at some point? Yes, definitely this year. I do think it will. But I just feel like, a, to me, I go, why don't we hit some of these prices? And it just, it feels like there was a lot of market manipulation. What do you think? Do you think it was market manipulation? Do you think it was something else? And then I just want to touch upon GRT because I was holding most of, of what I had was in GRT. And I decided, I had said when I did my price prediction at the beginning of March, I had said I thought GRT was going to go up to $3 and then maybe retrace a little bit. But I was saying $3 and it didn't happen. We went way, way down. I mean, it got down to at one point, it had a moment where I think it touched 140 something. Now we're back up at 185. There's been a massive amount of consolidation, but I think that's because everything started to go a bit crazy because of all the FUD um, around... Um, vested interest of, of developers and I have a video on it if you look about my why I think GRT is dumping I go into detail about that and that's under on Crypto Angel Network that's under the section where I have the GRT videos but I think that this um, because of the, the issue between the developers because certain things that are meant to milestones on the roadmap that are meant to have been reached that are not there yet because the community has not been able to reach an agreement yet and then also because a number of shareholders their interest um, will vest at the end of July and there is uh, there are rumors and again there are rumors they're just rumors that there is going to be a massive sell-off so there will be a huge pump possibly up to five dollars and then it's going to dump like near the top so if you hold GRT I would just say be really 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 careful I think now if you haven't already bought it like where I bought it earlier on and I you can see I took I just I decided to take my profits some people are like oh you don't have diamond hands I don't care I decided to take my $20,611 profit I just need to do what was right for me and my family because I had more money in there than I probably should have had in there and I just I don't want to gamble I want to and anything we're doing trading you know there is that risk with things so um so yeah so 20 I took my profits on this I do think that uh graph is gonna go I mean in April is it gonna go up to three you know it could just suddenly break out and then boom go up towards three dollars so I feel like maybe I was about a month and a half behind on that prediction this is where timing it's hard to be accurate but I am just saying to you please be very 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 careful at what point if if GRT starts to pump which it is gonna start to pump I think at some point in these you know it's coming up it's getting ready to break out when it does just just be super super careful and just just watch out for what's happening over the summer and i think that for a longer huddle you know if one isn't looking to take those profits and you can leave it in there then i imagine towards the end of the year it should be i mean it should have then at a certain point a new low of at least three dollars and um and possibly increase a, uh, a little bit more but if it goes up to five which it could i think it could this year it will then i think it's going to retrace maybe back down to three so again just always just be careful do your own due diligence and um let's see was there anything else that i had on that oh i know what i'd said the other thing and this is just the the last thing that i will share with you on this is that um i i had said at the beginning of march and bear in mind, I really started just getting into trading beginning of January. And I'd done a little bit um, mid-December. And then prior to that, barely anything. It was back in the end of 2017 at the peak. So beginning of March, I said, I'm just holding everything. I'm not touching the thing. I'm like, I'm just hodling GRT. I'm just keeping my Bitcoin. I'm just sitting with everything. And I didn't. I made a lot of changes. I ended up selling a bit of GRT, then I sold all the GRT. I jumped into ADA, I went out of Cardano, I jumped into VeChain, VThor. I had a whole load of Harmony, I bought even more Harmony than I'd originally anticipated, then got even more. Then I was like, wow, I'm really heavily in that. I think I need to diversify a bit. I sold a bit and took profits on that, stuck that into ADA, then went through terrible, like, 
feeling totally depressed that I'd done that because I I love the energy of harmony. I love it as a project and I just feel they deliver, deliver, deliver. I, and I'll just be, this is just my personal opinion. I have much more faith in harmony, the team and the community than I do in Cardano. I think there are some amazing people in the Cardano community and great things, but I also feel that there are some quite unscrupulous people involved in it too and that concerns me a lot there's things where you can have a whole load of good people but it just takes having a few bad apples to rock the whole cart and those apples to fall and and that is something it's a niggling feeling that won't go away and uh so i just uh, there's something for me personally that doesn't sit right with some of the stuff with Cardona. Yeah, people will make money with it this year. I mean, how can you, I feel like, how can you not make money in 2021? This is the biggest year ever. This is a historical year. And we're never going to see a year like this again in crypto. This is just one of those times that we are living in. And some people who hold Cardano, they're not going to like what I'm saying. But I just... And it just doesn't sit right for me. And and I think this is where there are so many tokens out there, so many projects. You have to, it has to align ultimately whatever you as a crypto angel invests into. It has to feel right for you. It has to feel good. It has to align with your core values, that there is some type of use for the token and, and from the teams that is just is really, really positive. The other thing that I'd said uh, that I was going to do was that I was going to buy into Persistence One. Persistence One just had their token launch. And uh, so I looked at that and I couldn't do it because I'm a U.S. citizen. As a U.S. citizen, um, U.S. citizens are excluded from that. And then when it does go on to a main exchange at a certain point, I, I don't know if I want to buy into it then at that point. And uh, and I did have one negative experience where, and I'm going to show, I'm going to be honest with you with this. I had, I'm in the Persistence One Telegram group, I'd done a number of videos on them because I'm very, very excited. And they were saying, oh, I'll share about Persistence One. And I wanted to go, I just think, I think their product is, inc- their financial products are incredible. And um, so I had, done videos on them and I was super excited and I went to share in the telegram group hey um you know they're like oh this is great let us know and I went to share and I was immediately blocked from the group like what this is so weird this is so weird so I emailed uh, persistence one and said you know I shared about how great I think what you're doing is your administrator blocked me I do have a channel on YouTube and I love what you're doing didn't hear from them and uh so i gotta admit that i think their product's great but i don't like how i was treated by the team i just don't like that and um so these are just some of the things you know maybe it doesn't matter one can overlook it and be like oh well stuff it just when it goes into exchange just buy it and just do well with it and take the profits how do you feel you know do you look at the entire team what for you makes you decide to buy or sell are you buying and selling impulsively or are you being very very strategic and i want to hear from you in the comments what you do and um I just also lastly just um, there are a number of you here who are amazing big shout out to uh, Kuche Sensai who has just always jumps in and gives incredible insights and also Joshua Werner thank you for being a, a support of the channel right from the beginning and I, I did hit that point I am at a point where I YouTube has offered me to monetize the channel. I've hit now well over 4,000 hours and in a way beyond much faster than I expected. And, um, but I'm not at this point, I'm not going to be putting ads on the channel. I'm just letting it be. So I'm not monetizing the channel right now. But if you ever want to go and get one of my books, Big Miracles, The 11 Spiritual Rules for Ultimate Success, or my other book, Unleash the Psychic in You, How to Trust Your Intuition for Success, um, that would delight me. Or just use one of my affiliate links from my description here for signing up for, you know, if it resonates for you, if it's a fit for the coin tracker or something. 
you know, or uh, for I, whatever else that I have in there. So there we go. This was an epic, epic video, but I, sort of, I just wanted to do a full update and a disclosure and I hope that you get to learn from the things that went well and the things that didn't go well. I, I'd say I've come out pretty decently with strong profit. I, I would have liked to have been further along. I think that um, just this idea of, oh, I could be hundreds of thousands of dollars in profit this year. Who knows? I mean, I think you've got to have some serious capital to put down and to be able to see those exponential gains. If one's going in and doing something with $1,000, $2,000, even $10,000, one has to be patient. One's got to be patient and just allow everything to increase. Thank you for commenting. Thank you for subscribing. Thank you for liking. I'm Joanna Garcetti. This is Crypto Angel Network and I am sending you lots and lots of love.